The next big thing when it comes to home entertainment is the 4K TV, and they're stupid. Now, if you didn't figure this out from my self-driving car video, I'm taking a holy grail of Reddit and deconstructing it in order to talk about vision, and maybe flirt a little bit with color, finally? 4K TVs will happen eventually, but they're kind of wasted on most people, so let's get started. Now this is currently being filmed in 1080p at 30 frames a second. Actually, 29.97 frames per second, but 30, okay? And this is pretty much the current standard format for most media, including YouTube. So let's take a step back and see how we got here. This is 480i, but this is clearly too small, so uh, there we go. If you're older than 20, you should recognize this. This is what home television was for most of its history. There were lower resolutions, but we have to start somewhere, okay? The resolution is 640 by 480. That's where the 480 and 480i comes from, the vertical resolution. This becomes important later. But let's talk about the i. That stands for interlaced. There's a difference between the field rate and the frame rate. The field rate or refresh rate is 60 hertz, while the frame rate is still 30. So you're getting half a frame interlaced each time. It may not be obvious with this video, but you've likely seen something like this in lower quality videos. This is called combing, and now you know why. This is why old CRT monitors and TVs would flicker or have that rolling bar when you tried to film them, because the camera frame rate and the screen frame rate didn't match up. And this is the format that VHS tapes were in. Home video and VHS tapes weren't really a thing until until Top Gun was released in 1987. That was the must-have VHS tape and basically started the whole home theater industry. That's just a funny side note. Re Actually, you know why? VHS tapes used to cost upwards of $100, but Top Gun brought the price way down by having a Diet Pepsi ad in the beginning. You remember the ad. Anyway, VHS tapes were a horrible format. It was just a magnetic tape. Not only did it degrade over time, but it also degraded with each viewing. So the hundredth time you watched it, it was noticeably worse than the first time. So it needed to be replaced. This is 480p, the format of DVDs, and you probably didn't notice much of a difference. DVDs are to VHS tapes what CDs were to audio cassettes. The only real difference was that the storage medium was much more durable, and the P. This stands for progressive scan, and unlike interlaced, it means that you're getting a full frame every time without any combing. Now, a common saying among the non-techno elite is that the porn industry decides what the next video format will be. And that's only been true once, during the VHS and Betamax wars of the 80s. But ever since then, it's been video games. Most people's first DVD player was the PlayStation 2, and the must-have DVD was the Matrix which came out in 1999. Every single person in high school right now was born after The Matrix came out. Feel old yet? So the transition from VHS to DVD was fairly quick because it was necessary, and film studios stopped releasing VHS tapes in 2006. That really feels like it should have been longer ago. Anyway, by 2006 people were starting to transition to high definition. You've probably noticed that we're in widescreen now. This ratio is known as 16 by 9 as opposed to 4 by 3 for full screen. Remember when old movies used to say, this film has been modified from its original version. It has been formatted to fit this screen. What they're saying is that they cut off the sides in order to make it 4 by 3. So widescreen is the actual movie, not, as I stupidly thought when I was a kid, the movie with black bars on the top and bottom. So HD not only made the resolution better by making it 1280 by 720, which is one and a half times the size of 480, but also standardized widescreen, which is far more accurate to what you actually see since you have two horizontally placed eyes, making your horizontal viewing angle much larger than your vertical. 720p is kind of the forgotten middle child, because it came out at the same time as 1080i and 1080p which is also known as full high definition. This is more like what you're used to, I hope. It's one and a half times the size of 720p, so two and a quarter times the size of 480i. The resolution is 1920 by 1080, and it's still 30 frames a second. Much like in the 80s, from 2006 to 2008 was the Blu-ray versus HD DVD war, spearheaded by the video game consoles, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. They were both pretty much the same format, 1080p, with slightly different compression, so they were really only competing to see who could get the most sales. Which Blu-ray won partially because the PlayStation 3 had a Blu-ray player built in, unlike the 360's HD DVD player which you had to buy separately 
God, that was stupid. There were no must-haves or firsts when it came to Blu-ray like in the previous video formats, but the first Blu-ray movies came out in June 2006. 50 first dates, what the f So here we are in the current mainstream format. Why did I just talk you through the history and evolution of video formats? Because we're already talking about upgrading to the next formats, again spearheaded by the video game consoles, the PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. Before we get into the resolution changes, let's talk about frame rate. As I said, this video is being filmed and shown to you in 30 frames per second, or FPS, but there's been a recent shift to 60 frames a second. Yeah, I know, we round up, I don't know why. Frame rate is kind of a sacred cow in the gaming community and on Reddit, and they'll defend it stronger than the Second Amendment people, so I have to tread lightly. Let me start this off by saying that the average person person watching my video, whether you're a subscriber or you found this on Reddit, is not the average consumer. You're probably an early adopter, the techno elite, not the average consumer. Remember when you thought 3D TV, Google Glass, and VR were going to be a thing? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Now, the human eye doesn't really see in frames, you see pretty much continuously. But Beyond a certain speed, things can move too fast for you to notice. Now, depending on your source, at rest, that seems to be about 45 to 72 frames per second. Let's go with 72. That means just sitting there on your couch eating Doritos, if something appears on screen for 1 72nd of a second, Odds are, you'll miss it. Unless you know where to look and you're waiting for it. That's at rest though. Your perceived frame rate changes with your arousal level. If you just went for a run or are being chased by a dinosaur, or more likely you're hopped up on caffeine, you can see up to 120 frames per second. And if you're a superhuman or a fighter pilot, or you're on cocaine or something, you might be able to see up to 240, but no one has been able to reliably do it beyond that. If you still think that you can, you belong in a lab or something because you're some sort of mutant. So again, you don't really see in frames per second, but if something appears and disappears above a certain frame rate, you probably won't notice. 30 frames per second was established as the standard decades ago, but I'll get to why in a moment. 60 frames per second, on the other hand, seems to be where the economic use of energy and human perception meet. PC gaming has been at or above 60 frames per second for decades now, and most computer screens are 60 hertz, so they top out at 60 frames per second per second. If you brag about your 150 frames per second on your 60 hertz screen, I won't ruin the illusion for you. For a while after HD came out, they started to push different frame rates. When we're talking about screens, that's hertz. But hertz is frame rate. First it was 60, then 120, and then 240. But then they stopped because the average consumer was complaining. Why would that be if we don't really see in frames per second? Because of the soap opera effect. The soap opera effect is when things look too crisp and too fluid for real life, giving it an eerie look and causing motion sickness. Move your hand in front of your face. There was a significant motion blur, wasn't there? Now, this camera isn't set to film above 30 frames a second, so let me, uh, there we are. Okay, here's my hand over here, and now I'm moving it over here. You probably didn't notice anything weird, but here it is again, side by side with 30 frames a second. Notice how there is no motion blur? So the soap opera effect makes things look like they're moving in slow motion, but at regular speed. I know, it's weird, which is why it gives people motion sickness. The soap opera effect doesn't really affect video games because A, it's not real life, so nothing really looks all that strange, and B, they program in motion blur. So manufacturers have kind of stopped with the 240 and they're sticking to the 120 and 60, with 60 likely being the new standard. However, your frame rate isn't uniform across your entire field of vision, which I'll get to in a moment. The next big shift is to 4K or Ultra HD, which is a stupid name, by the way. It's just something they came up with in a marketing meeting in order to make it sound more epic. Remember the naming conventions from before? 480, 720, 1080? There's a nice pattern going on there. But 4K is four times the size of 1080p, so you would think it would be called 4X. But it's only twice the width and height. So if we go by the same naming rules, it's 2160p. So where does 4K come from? It's the horizontal measurement, 3840, rounded up to 4K. If we use that same naming convention, 1080p is actually 2K. I told you it's dumb. Anyway, HD was a huge jump from regular D. Most people could tell the difference, but HD to 4K? Most people can't. Again, you're not the average consumer. And remember, you're usually sitting about 10 feet away from your TV, or at least 
you should be. Actually, the myth that if you sit too close to your TV screen, you'll damage your eyes is kind of true, but not for the reasons you were told as a kid. It has nothing to do with the flickering or the pixels or anything. It has to do with the fact that you're not changing your depth perception or focal length any. While you're watching TV or playing a game, your brain is perceiving depth even though everything, whether it's the guy in the background or your own character, are the same distance away. So your eyes never really have to adjust, so they get fatigued and strained. You won't really damage your eyes, but they'll hurt. This would happen whether you're watching a TV or you go outside and stare at a tree for three hours straight. 4K is 3840 by 2160, which means that there are 8,294,400 pixels, or just 8.3 megapixels for short. For a 60 inch TV, that means each individual pixel is a third of a millimeter wide. Put a dot on a piece of paper only a third of a millimeter wide and then put it 10 feet away. Okay, you'll probably still see it because it's a black dot on a white piece of paper, but okay, you know what I'm getting at. But you know what? There's been a single black pixel right here for the last few seconds. Go back and watch it again. You probably didn't notice. And this is 1080p. Do you really think you would have seen it if it was a quarter of the size? Now get this, there are 8.3 million pixels on that TV, and there are only 6 million cones in your eye. But that isn't the whole story because each pixel is actually 3 pixels in one, red, green, and blue. I hope you know that those are the primary colors of light. But we only think that because we're human. If you were to ask an alien what the 3 primary colors are, they might say, 3? Silly human, there are 15. Though that's pretty unlikely because why- Wait, 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 this isn't the color episode, stop. Anyway, the cones in your eye are only red, green, or blue. And while the ratio isn't exactly a third, if we match them up to make a pixel, that means that there are only two million pixels in your eye. Before you say anything, rods don't matter. If cones are the pixels in your eye, then rods are like the backlight. You can't really see with only rods, which Stop trying to get me sidetracked. Anyway, cones aren't evenly spread across your retina. They're concentrated in an area called the fovea, which is only a third of a millimeter wide in the center of your retina. So while you're looking at this screen and think that you see this, you actually see this. And you have to take into account the fact that we're squishing 210 degrees of your visual field down to maybe 15. But I'm actually still being generous. Of your visual field, your focal area is only one degree wide. Hold out your hand and look at one fingernail. The other fingernails aren't in focus. So as you can, hey, my eyes are up here. But since most of your cones are concentrated in the fovea, as you get out to the periphery, there's less color perception. The fovea is also where you get the highest frame rate, by the way. It's the most important part of your vision, and it's really the only part that gets tested when we figure out if you have 20-20 vision. Another side note, there's no such thing as perfect vision. What 20-20 means is that at 20 feet, you can read what most other people can read at 20 feet away. If you have 20-100 vision, that means that you have to stand 20 feet away from something that other people can read at 100 feet away. You have bad vision, but it's okay because we all kind of do. But while we do have some of the best general purpose vision in the animal kingdom, our eyes are really poorly designed. All of your cones and rods are on your retina in the back of your eye, and all of those cells need blood. Guess where the blood vessels are? Yeah, in front of the retina. So at all times, you're looking through a field of blood which your brain usually filters out, but kind of looks like this. And all of those blood vessels have to get back out of your eye somehow, which they do through a hole in the retina, which results in a blind spot. Close your left eye. Actually, remind me about this in a second. Anyway, close your left eye and focus your right eye on the cross to the left and move either your head or your phone closer or further away. Once you hit the sweet spot, the circle will disappear. It'll be a different distance depending on what size monitor you're on, but if you're watching this on a computer, it's about three feet. Your brain fills in that spot with whatever's surrounding it. It's kind of cool when you think about it. So not only do you not see this, you see this, but you also have this going on. And that's not the end of the story because if you close one... Oh yeah, okay, what do you see when you close one eye? If you think it's this, you're wrong. When you close your eye, your brain receives a no input signal from that retina and shuts off all incoming information. So you don't see half black, you see this. Don't believe me? Close your left eye. Now cover your left eye and open it again. See, there's a huge difference. Anyway, so again, you're seeing this with the addition of this fun mess, which can be bigger or smaller depending on how lucky or 
unlucky you are. So do you really think that you need a massive TV with pixels literally the size of dust mites with all of this going on? Again, 4K will happen, mostly because they're just gonna stop making regular HD TVs, but not anytime soon. There's virtually no content for 4K right now. Anything before last year will never be in true 4K because it wasn't filmed in 4K. The current generation of Blu-ray disc, the triple layer, holds 125 gigabytes of data. Do you know how big a 90 minute 4K video is? 477 gigabytes. So okay, it probably won't be on any physical media anytime soon. So streaming, obviously. Yeah, well, unless you live in a big city and not somewhere rural or like Australia, you better get used to this happening a lot. The major hurdle for 4K right now is the file size. It's just too large. And there are virtually no games in 4K right now because of the processing power that would take. As of May 2017, only 0.82% of Steam players played in 4K. And Steam players are the PC gaming elite, so... Yeah, and in terms of TVs, in 2016, only 25% of all new TV sales were 4K. If I were a betting man, which I am, I would say that it's gonna take another five to 10 years for 4K to catch on for the mainstream. Like cars, most people don't buy a new TV until their current one breaks. 8K on the other hand will never happen. It's just too much for too little payoff. If we look at video formats like soap, 480p and DVD is like regular old soap. It's fine for most people and many people still use it. 1080p is a big antimicrobial step up. It's obviously better and most people will get it if they can. 4K is mega antibacterial, kills 99.99% of everything soap. And 8K is massive overkill, 99.999, like who cares, all right? There's an upper limit to what is necessary and 8K has 16 times the pixel density of HD. That's too much. That's five times as many pixels as cones in your eye. You're never gonna get a TV with pixels the size of atoms, and at a certain point, it's just not an economical use of energy, storage, or bandwidth. And if you don't have better than 2020 vision, it's pretty much lost on you. Most people don't see or care about the difference. And if you don't believe me, they still make DVDs and sell them by the millions. Last week, I posted a poll on Twitter, shameless plug to follow me on there, asking people if they were to buy a movie today, which format would they prefer? Not which one could they afford, not which setup do they have, which would they prefer? And here are the results. Again, my average subscriber is not the average consumer. So if anything, these results are skewed in 4K's favor. Think of all the people out there who don't use Reddit or YouTube or Twitter. These are the people who still buy the Blu-ray DVD combo pack for the DVD. So now I hope you understand a little bit more about not just TVs and video formats, but how your eyes work and how your brain cleans up the information it gets. I was exaggerating a little bit with some of those effects, but not by much. Seriously, start to notice some of the weird things about your vision that your brain filters out. It's kind of amazing. And the next time you go out shopping for a new TV, hopefully now, you'll know better. So what was your first memorable Blu-ray? Do you plan on switching to 4K? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to foveate on that subscribe button. Also be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and check out my recently revamped Patreon with new rewards and the new $1 tier.